This video is sponsored once again by Squarespace. If you're looking to build yourself a website, I highly recommend it. I've been using it myself for the past two years. Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at this ride here and that is the high grade Lodo twin set. So if you've never actually heard of this kit right here, I'm not surprised. This is one that tends to fly under the radar quite a lot. And uh, I guess it makes sense, it is a special operations mobile suit. So this is from the Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn OVAs. You may have noticed it, or you may have even not really registered the scenes that it was in because it does play a very small support role, mainly getting blown up. But honestly, to me, the concept behind this mobile suit is really, really cool, and I will talk about that a little bit more when we're looking at the aesthetics. But as a build, this is a very simple set of kits. I put out all the parts pretty much for everything besides the weaponry, so that is the entire pair of mobile suits on one A3 cutting mat. This is a very simple build, but at the same time, it is really, really good. Sometimes I worry a little bit when it comes to 2010 kits, especially when they're from Gundam Unicorn, but this is actually better than I thought it would be. There are some issues with the finished kit, of course I will talk about that in a while, the knees being one of the biggest issues, but besides that, this is a really fun kit, a great concept, now let's get into taking a look at it. No matter what you want to build a website for, Squarespace has you covered. It's the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Want to showcase your Gunpla builds to the world? With Squarespace's professional galleries and portfolio designs, you can showcase your collection in perfect, curated glory. Looking to monetize your hobby? Well, you can do that too. Generate revenue with a paid VIP members area or open up your own online Gunpla store and share your hobby with the world. Link your social media accounts for maximum impact and don't even worry about optimizing for mobile. Squarespace has automatic image scaling to make sure your images always look right, both on desktop and on mobile. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash mechagaikotsu to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So jumping into the overview of absolutely everything that comes in the box, that is the two Lotos, as well as a full loadout for both, or should I say a multitude of loadouts for both. So these did appear at multiple points during the course of Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn, and with different equipments. So even though there is a lot here, there's technically three different loadouts for each, as well as some alternate parts for using on the arms. But let's go and check out the Loto itself first. So jumping right on into the aesthetics with the 360 spin and this is one of the most unusual looking Gundam mobile suits I have ever seen and for a multitude of reasons. First off, this kind of looks like a little Master Chief inspired mech right here with that color scheme and the general vibe and visor, especially the blocky head. Next up, as you can tell from those caterpillar tracks around back, this is a transforming suit. It can transform into a sort of tank. I have not tried just yet. I'm keeping that for the video. And one thing I definitely noticed about this kit, and it is the case with older unicorn kits, especially in darker colors like this green, there are a lot of knobs everywhere. Now, I treated this kit exactly like I treat every kit for review, which is two snips off the runner with the god hand. It is an aging god hand, by the way, so it ain't what it used to be, but still, it's usually enough to hide the knobs 90% of the time. This marks a lot so I do recommend taking some extra caution and some time with these kits. Besides that though we do have a lot of nice intricate detail and a little bit of an issue with some of the color separation. Let's jump in closer. So before you get too excited and are like two mobile suits in one box for the price of one high grade where do I sign up? Well, just know that these are probably the tiniest little mobile suits I have ever seen. There's the High Grade Revive or X78-2 for comparison. These guys are tiny, which in a way makes them even more impressive. So what makes the Lodo right here such a unique mobile suit is its battlefield role. If you take your standard mobile suit, even if it's just a grunt suit, it's just one pilot in a cockpit doing everything. Somehow two Joysticks and two pedals can control everything a mobile suit does, down to the individual digits, what it does, its dramatic in-air posing, everything. Two joysticks, two pedals, one guy. I'm sure it's something to do with the onboard computer, but anyway, the Lodo ride here. There's 12 guys inside of this. It's almost half the size of a regular mobile suit, and there's 12 lads cooped up inside of this. 
Three to four guys are the main crew on board this particular mobile suit. One is the actual pilot of the thing. There's a communications officer in the upper torso and a vehicle commander in the lower torso. And also according to the wiki right here, when required, an additional crew member can be seated in the pelvis for mission specific assistance and tasks. Besides that, round on the back here in this massive compartment, this seats an additional eight crew members. So that is the special operations aspect of this. If you need to get some special operatives into the battlefield to do whatever they need to do, then this works as an armored troop carrier, a bipedal one or a tank. How cool is that? I mean, when it comes to the actual Gundam lore, this doesn't really play that big of a role. Nothing huge, nothing really earth shattering or anything like that. But if you thought of something like this in a real world situation, it's an armored troop carrier, it's a bipedal weapons platform, and it also serves as a field headquarters and a mobile communications vehicle because of all of the sensors and communication devices in it. This thing is crazy. And then it just gets skewered by Kshatriya. So it's safe to say I do love the Lodo, it's such a well thought out mobile suit that has so much going on in such a tiny little package. So when it comes to the looks and the color accuracy, this thing looks fantastic and the color accuracy considering how diminutive this is, it really is quite impressive. We've got the khaki green plastic, we've got the military beige and we've got grey. The only thing this is really missing is some whites. If you check out the stickers right here, we did get stickers for the visor, the head camera, but we are lacking some white sections for on the rest of the torso. But besides that, this is incredible. So now moving back to that layout of accessories and here's everything that comes in the box. So let's try them all out one by one. So this is a transformable kit and because there's two in the box, I can show you both the mobile suit mode and the tank mode at the same time, which is pretty rad. So you've probably noticed by now, but the Lodo right here does not have your standard mobile suit style hands. We've got a missile pod in the end of both. So if you want to rain hell on your enemies with these particular missile pods, well, first off, you do have to swap some parts. There's no opening compartment and Bandai didn't make this too easy to do. There's nothing really to catch onto. So you kind of have to stick something in there in order to dislodge them or make, you know, make your decision permanently at the beginning sometime. But there we go. There they are attached. These are not fully color accurate, but they are nicely sculpted. So the Lodo right here may not have your typical style manipulators, but that does not mean it doesn't have anything. We do have these moving little segments. Actually, they don't move at all. We do have those little segments right there. We do have an alternate set of these particular sub arm and their manipulators. And this variant is what they're like when they're extended. So this is the manipulator up top, as you can see there, with a little bit of a piece poking out, which is the beam burner. This is a little hard to see because it is very, very tiny, but what's sculpted here is an open hatch with the manipulator coming out of it, and that is all connected onto the arm. Unlike the other one that did not move, this one can swing side to side, just like so. So next up in here, we've got a pair of long cannons, and they're exactly what they say. Long cannons for long range shooting. So these just attach up onto the shoulders of the Lodo like so. So this is what they look like attached onto it in mobile suit form and there they are attached onto it in tank form. These can crane up and down like so, but I will mention they are a little bit loose at their ball joint. Sometimes the body starts to split slightly and that makes them extremely floppy. So the balls on this might need to be thickened ever so slightly to make them work perfectly. But besides that, looking good. And once again, there they are on the tank. So next up in here, we've got the Mega Machine Cannon. Now these are used in ones, but there's nothing stopping you in here from using both on the one mobile suit. These work in pretty much the exact same way and for all intents and purposes, they are designed the same as the cannons. They can crane up and down, stick into the exact same slot, suffer a little bit from the same floppy droppiness if you don't tighten them up a little bit. And honestly, these look pretty cool. A big old Gatling machine cannon. What more can you ask for? This is big, fairly heavy and can throw off the balance in mobile suit mode, but it's cool. Last up in here then, we've got the machine cannon. Now this works a little differently to everything we saw before. You have to remove the little bar segments or hard points up on the shoulders. Once these are removed, you just slot in the machine cannon and this thing on the right, which I can only assume from the wiki, is a searchlight. I can't see anything about it in the instructions, so if that is incorrect, let me know in the comments. But this, again, is really nice. This is some light weaponry that isn't as over the top or as clunky as what we saw before. Very fitting for a special operations mobile suit. There it is on the mobile suit and there it is on that tank mode. 
So before we jump into the articulation, I will mention really briefly about the transformation. Somehow the footage got deleted, or at least half of it did, so it is very simple, very easy. You just flip up the legs, lock in the arms, the backpack flips out, and it's all seamless and there is no parts formation. Very nice. So now moving on to the build and the articulation, and the build for the most part is quite awesome. Besides the aspect that the feet are a little bit on the, well, they don't do very well. At the back, the heel is a little bit on the small side, so it means, you know, it falls backwards because that backpack, it is back heavy. But you can balance it. At the neck joint, if you ignore the fact that the head can slot into the body as part of the transformation, it is just a ball joint with left, right, up and down. And the up and down is extremely, extremely limited. At the shoulder, it's pretty much a fairly standard ball joint, so that means you do get the full shoulder roll, the 360 spin, and as for the up and down, there it is all the way up and down. Again, quite impressive for a small and simple kit. The bend at the elbow is a bang on right angle. The waist articulation is super limited because of the backpack. I'll also mention there is no ab crunch. The front skirting armors can lift up and swing out like so. And I'll also mention because this happened off camera, it does tend to split at this point with those tiny, tiny little pegs quite often. So you might want to make sure you glue or cement those. That's happened to me quite a bit throughout the review. Get back out head. Side skirting armor moves up and down ever so slightly. The waist in here is just a ball and socket joint and that segment you can see in there can drop down. Once again, that is part of the transformation and allows the legs to swing up and forward like so. This is one of those kits that has a bend at the knee that kind of almost looks like the leg is not bent at all. This does lock like this as well for the transformation. As for the kicks, there's the leg all the way up to the front. There it is out to the back, so a little bit limited. And as for the splits, these are ball joints, so we get that, which isn't that bad. Dropping that foot on the ground now for the functional movement, and there it is all the way to the front, all the way to the back, so that's the pivot back and forward. There it is side to side, and it is quite limited. Once again, woo! This is a very real robot with some real fragile parts, especially in there, so be careful with this guy. So yeah, when it comes to the articulation on this kit, it doesn't really do a whole lot whatsoever. It is very, very basic, but like I mentioned, this is almost half the size of a standard Gunpla kit. It is a incredibly real clunker of a robot, so honestly, I'd give it a pass for that. However, we do have an included action-based adapter, so you can pose it. However, it is inclined to fall over backwards all the time, no matter what pose you get it in. But we do have an action-based adapter in here, which attaches onto the backpack like so. Put those legs! They keep falling off. Glue those. When you're building it, cement or glue those. It'll save you a lot of hassle. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And I was going to give this bronze tier. It does have a lot of issues. It can't really pose at all. The articulation is basic. There is a lot of parts you would have to paint up. Well, not really. A few parts you need to paint up to make it fully color accurate. And the accessories, no, the accessories are quite good. Honestly, by gut feeling alone, this to me is a silver tier kit. There's nothing really wrong with it per se. Anything that you could complain about comes from the fact that this is so tiny, but Bandai have really squeezed a lot of awesomeness into it, especially for an 11 year old kit. It holds up quite well. Not literally, falls down all the time, but it holds up as a very nice model and nice build in 2020. And personally, just for the lore alone, this is such a cool mobile suit. It's an armored troop carrier, a mobile command vehicle, and it has multiple crew members on board. It makes more sense robotically. It's a real clunker of a real robot that is like a walking tank. There's no space magic here, no over the top little boy who can just fly around in a robot for no real reason. It is a military vehicle and that just makes it kick ass. And you get two of them. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. Thank you so, so much to Squarespace once again for supporting the channel by sponsoring the video. And as always, I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Van Fon, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kuklock, Global Frequency Studios, Forseti, Caleb Engelhart, and Bakito Official.